I guess I can't forget this here, our little honey pot that we keep inside. This is my honey for the year, um, 77 pounds. I'm happy with that. Uh, this isn't exactly 77 pounds. There's um, a few pounds we've already given away to some family and friends. And I think we've gone through a pound and I think there's another two pounds in our cupboard. Um, and this is our little honey pot that we keep on our uh, counter. So this is my third year beekeeping. I had uh, six or seven hives this year. Not all of them was I able to harvest honey from. Really, this comes from two solid hives plus one hive that I split, and I got um, a few frames from that after I split. So I'm really excited about selling some of this, about giving some away to friends and family, and enjoying it for myself. Um, I love beekeeping. I started a beekeeping club for high school students at the school I teach at. I've written a beekeeping logbook available on Amazon. Um, and I've just had a great year. So I'm going to take you over to the bee yard and we're gonna go through some of the hives and just discuss the ups and downs I've had in 2020 with my beekeeping season because I could get a fall harvest this, um, uh, this year, but with everything going on, I don't know if I'm going to try to do that. So uh, let's head over to the bee yard. It has been quite the bee year, 2020. I mean, it's been quite the 2020 year, huh? Um, I hopefully already showed you my honey harvest. If I didn't, I'll be doing that in this video. Um, just to show you the honey that I harvested. Now, it's not just about the honey. Uh, there's a joy that I get from beekeeping. Um, I've helped others this year. I started a beekeeping club last year with a friend of mine. Actually, a year and a half ago, almost two years ago. Um, so... What I love is that I have this log book, the ultimate beekeeper's log book. This guy wrote it. Oh, it's me. Um, when I first started beekeeping, I couldn't find a good log book and there's so much information to find on the internet. So I just learned it all on my own and I wrote this book. Uh, it's mainly a log book, but it's more than just an inspection book. You can keep track of your uh, blooms in your area your supplies, the people you sell honey to. There's a lot of stuff in here and a lot of bee biology because I have a background in biology. I have a master's in biology education. So I only started off, I had two hives last year. They overwintered and only one made it. Um, right now we're looking at, if you count the nuke, two, four, seven hives. So I started off with one hive and now I'm working with seven hives. So I'm gonna go through each hive, talk about them. I'm gonna tell you the struggles that each one had. And we may open up a few of them. We're probably gonna treat um, for Varroa mites. I use uh, Formic pads, um, strips that you can put in um, for 10 days and then another 10 days, or you can do 14 days, a double dose. Sometimes I just leave mine in um, for longer than that. I assume hey if there's even a little bit of dose left then that's good for me because my first year I did lose my hives to varroa mites um, so let's go ahead and check out our hives and uh, we'll talk about uh, the struggles and the triumphs of each of my seven hives again this is what I love about record keeping is I can go back to February and I can tell you exactly how my hives are doing that's what I love about keeping records and if I did something right I have it in the books if I did something wrong, I have it in the books. Um, I know my bee yard is uh, kind of weedy. I want to take care of that this winter, but it just got out of control. But that's for another video. So let's go ahead and talk about my hive that made it, that overwintered. So this hive right here, um, even though the tape's coming off, is hive B. Now what I do is I try to letter or number my hives so that I can keep track of them. When you have more than a hive or two, that's really important, at least I think. So hive B was a hive that made it. It overwintered and it was crazy. It had like 20 plus frames of bees. So what I did is I split that with hive A right here, which you can't see the A on it. 
Oh, there's hive A. So hive B and hive A I split. But hive B had the queen. Hive A had to make their queen. But then X is for swarm. I'm pretty sure that that swarm came from hive B. So what happened as far as honey harvesting? I did harvest a few frames from uh, hive B, maybe like six frames, which isn't much. Um, hive A went bonkers and I harvested 20 frames this year. So I'm pretty proud of hive A. Now a friend of mine says you can either make bees or you can make honey, but you can't do both. So Hive B was the mother of the splits. She had the queen, X was a swarm, and A was really my honey producer. So let's go ahead and look at those hives, and we may also look at this nuke. This nuke was actually a gift from a good friend of mine, from my bee mentor. I had a baby this year, and his uh, gift for the baby, uh, or for the family, was this nuke which is pretty cool that's a a great gift so let's um open these and um we're gonna treat with formic and uh check them out So Hive A right here is the brood. It's closed brood, cat brood, which tells me that the queen's been here um, at least 23 days ago. Um, so hopefully we're gonna see some open brood, some eggs, and maybe some larvae. It's still, I mean, it's August. She should still be laying, so that's what we're looking for. But right here, that's a uh, cap worker brood. Um, drone brood looks to me like corn pops. That cereal, corn pops. Okay, more cat brood. Okay, so right here is capped worker brood, some drone brood. Um, there's uncapped larva a little bit. So I know she's been here at least within eight days. She could be on this frame too. Hive beetles. Maybe it's wax moth, but.
This is my swarm hive, which is swarmed in June. So not one of my biggest hives, but I actually do this on purpose. I put some medium frames in here and they build drone comb underneath and then I can pop that drone comb off and it'll limit the amount of uh, drones I get and how much Faroa mites I get as well, but they didn't have anything on there. Whoa. So the hives, the three hives we just looked at, I got honey from A, I got 20 frames from A, maybe six from B. The swarm is doing good, uh, but only about eight frames of bees. These hives here, C and E on the left and right, um, were packages, and I started with two packages this was my worst luck for packages a queen died like the day i had it they killed the queen and i let them make a new queen and then weeks later c also lost their queen um, and they made a new queen um, the hive in the middle is my school hive i teach high school and i help start a beekeeping club but with covid we had to um, bring the bees back to my place for the year and I'm going to sell their honey and that honey's going to go, or that money honey, honey money, is going to go back to the bee club. But let's open up these hives.
got eggs. Oh my god, they got a lot of honey. A great hive. Looking good, bees, looking good. But, gotta do it to get them mites out. I haven't seen any mites really this year, but I just assume that they're here. Okay. 